Hello lovely people, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, today I'm going to be giving you my opinions and my advice on where to begin with low whistle. Now a lot of people when they're starting out choosing a low whistle tend to go for the whistle that they love the look of, um, that sounds the best, that they really desperately want. And what happens a lot of the time is the whistle tends to be too heavy, too large, too demanding for them to stick playing with. And uh, that's kind of where people go wrong with low whistle, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. Please feel free to disagree and have your own opinions. But uh, this is where I started with low whistle and I've had a great time and I love playing low whistle and it was a really easy way to get started. So these are my top tips for choosing your first low whistle and then progressing from there. Now, when it comes to choosing your first low whistles, there are loads of great places to start. And the easiest way to begin is with a slightly smaller low whistle. Now, whistles in the keys of A, G or F are shorter and smaller than whistles in the key of D. For example, this is a low D whistle and this is a low F whistle. Both of these whistles have a nice deep tone that is lower than your standard high C or D whistle, but this one is considerably easier to play for a few reasons. Firstly, uh, the holes are closer together, so the piper's grip, which is what you need to play low whistle, isn't as severe as a larger low D whistle. Also with an A whistle, uh, the holes tend to be a little bit smaller, so if you do have small hands or thin fingers, you'll find a smaller whistle, a smaller low whistle, far easier to play than a larger low whistle. So. If you're considering low whistle to start with, work your way down. Go for an A or a G or even an F, and these will be easier to play than a low D or C whistle. Secondly, I'd recommend to start with a plastic low whistle for a number of reasons. Plastic low whistles are lightweight and low whistles in general are a lot heavier than your standard high whistles. So choosing a plastic whistle will mean that your hands won't tire as quickly and your wrists won't ache because the whistle is of a similar weight to your high whistle. So it makes the transition process a lot easier. Again, if you're going for um, a smaller whistle, going for a smaller, lighter weight plastic whistle will really help. Now the breath requirements of a low whistle are also different. Um, for example, you'll need a lot more air to blow through a low D than you will a high D because of the sheer size of it. Again, when you're reaching the second octave and the upper notes, you'll need even more air to get those notes out of a low whistle. So bear that in mind. A good place to start is a low whistle that doesn't require as much air. And for example, sassato whistles are a great place to go. They don't need as much breath to get the notes out, which means that you can get used to pushing a little bit more air through the whistle without feeling out of breath when you first start out. Now, I don't have one to show you, but some low whistles come with offset holes, and I will put a few links in the description below. I have discussed this in other videos. Um, I'll show you a link to a sheer water whistle. Um, but yeah, a lot of makers do make whistles with offset holes, and these can be made for left or right-handed players. And all this means is that rather than being in a straight line, the holes actually curve around the whistle. So this makes the piper's grip a little bit easier because you don't need to keep all the fingers in a row. You can offset them a little bit, which goes with the more natural angle that your hands play at. So this can be great for people with smaller hands. It makes very low whistles like D whistles more accessible. Um, and it also means that you'll need less of a finger stretch. So great place for starting out. Start with a whistle with offset holes. They're not difficult to find. Um, again, Shearwater did this for me when I first started out, and I know there are a few other makers out there. If you guys know who these people are, please leave them in the comments so that people can check their whistles out. Um, yeah, try the offset holes. Now, there are a few other things to consider. Um, this MK Pro Low D, the holes on the bottom hand are closer together than on some of my other whistles, and the same applies for the top hand. For example, the Chris Wall Low D, the uh, hole spacings are a little bit different. So you can see that if you were to buy the Chris Wall, you'd need to have a larger finger spacing starting out than with the MK Pro. Now, a lot of whistle makers will give you the uh, dimensions of the holes and the location of the holes on the whistle to give you an idea of whether you can cover that stretch. I did a lot of research before I ordered 
my whistle, um, just to make sure that my fingers could cover those spaces. And what I did was actually drew some holes on a piece of pipe, like so, and uh, spaced them according to the manufacturer's specifications. And I tried to work out whether I'd be able to cover those holes with my hands. So that was how I chose my whistle, and I'd never played it before. I chose I buy all my instruments online, so I've never picked up and tried them until they arrive in the post, but I've never had any problems. So that is it from me today. In summary, my quick fire suggestions for choosing your first whistle are a cheap whistle, something under or around £50. Secondly, a plastic whistle. They're lighter weight, they're less stress on the fingers, less stress on the wrists, and easier to hold on to. Thirdly, a whistle that doesn't require too much air, because yeah, the change from high whistle to low whistle needs a lot of lung power. Fourth, choose a whistle that is slightly smaller. Go for an A or an F whistle rather than a D to start with and work your way down. And last but not least, do your research. Find a whistle that has holes close together or offset holes when you're first starting out. Once you've chosen your whistle, practice, practice, practice. And you will get it, guys. It is all about practice. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell notification button down below. Leave me comments, questions, suggestions, whatever you may have down in the messages. Check me out on Coffee and Patreon. I say this every week. And don't forget to check out my merchandise. I've seen some photographs of people with my merchandise and it's amazing. Seeing people wear my t-shirt designs is incredible. So if you have a cutie pie t-shirt design, let me know, send me a picture, and I will add that on my Facebook page and my Instagram, and I will show you off modeling my awesome merchandise, being the awesome person you are. Don't forget to check out my other tips and tricks videos here on YouTube. Until next time, happy whistling, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. I think I mumbled. Was any of that coherent? We'll never know.